Oh yeah, you love your bike. The sexy lines, that super cool finish. It's so light and the shifting is so fast and precise. The gravity defying wheels, mmm, fast. When you're at work, all you can think about is getting back on your bike. Everyone else is so jealous of your sweet ride. Oh, and the way it handles, what a dream. Sound familiar? Welcome to CycleCraft TV. I'm Brendan, the owner of the CycleCraft Cycling Center located in Parsippany, New Jersey, and all around the world at CycleCraft.com. Now, before you put that fire out, do me a favor and slap that like button and subscribe to CycleCraft TV, the cycling channel that doesn't have a single English bloke riding a superbike he got for free. But we are full of that New Jersey charm. In an earlier video, I talked about how a bike seat can make or break your ride experience. Beside the seat, though, the shorts you wear make a difference, too. On a quick ride around the neighborhood, there's no need to kit up in your full-on cycling superhero costume. A comfy saddle should keep you pretty happy for short rides. But if you're doing longer, more dynamic rides, good bike shorts will make your ride great, whereas bad shorts? Forget about it. Let's get real here for a second, though. I don't care how expensive your bike is, or how great your seat is, or your fit, or your shorts, a five-plus hour bike ride is going to have some negative impacts in the crotchal region. But paying attention to these things can really maximize the fun and minimize the drama. Now that we have that out of the way, you might be asking, what makes bike shorts good? That's a great question, and we're going to explore that answer in two parts. First, we'll talk about the parts of the shorts, materials and construction. It's actually fairly complicated and why good shorts are not cheap. Then we'll talk about how to properly wear them. Yep, that makes a big difference. Okay then, what makes shorts into bike shorts? Primarily, it's the use of a chamois or a pad if you like in the seat. It's called a chamois because back in the day, when all bike shorts were made from wool, the pad was made from chamois leather. There are a lot of different pads out there, some thick, some thin. They come in varying levels of anatomic shape and fit. The best pads are made in Italy, and you can fight me on that one. And generally, the more you spend, the better quality and performance. But just because it's expensive doesn't mean it will be comfortable for you. Also, thicker is not always better. Another piece of the puzzle is the short itself, generally made of stretchy lycra material. And it comes in varying thickness and compression, or levels of stretchiness that will impact your perception of overall comfort. The other aspect of the short is how many panels are used in the construction of the short. In general, the more panels used and how they're cut and sewn together will determine how well they fit and perform while riding. Some shorts will actually not feel comfortable when you're standing up in them, but when in riding position, magically transform into the most comfortable clothing you own. The bottom line here, you should try some different brands before you make your choice. You may wind up owning several pairs of shorts before you discover your personal shorts nirvana. For the baggy shorts crowd, all that stuff I talked about still applies to the liner short that may have come with your baggies. There are also liner shorts sold separately as well that can turn any shorts into bike shorts. These undershorts from beneath has this pouch feature. The benefit here is pretty self-explanatory, and I can confirm that it works and they're comfortable. Now for the second half of the equation. How do you wear bike shorts properly? It's not as straightforward as you may think. Rule number one, though, is bike shorts should be worn commando style. So no underwear, especially cotton. The pad is meant to be worn right next to the skin. The whole objective is to eliminate pressure points and friction. The more layers of fabric you have, the more opportunity for discomfort. Our objective is to get that pad right up against your undercarriage. Now, when you put your bike shorts on, you'll want to pull them up nice and snug and get all the anatomic parts of the pad all up in your anatomy. Remember, you want a smooth interface between your skin and the seat. So the final step is to reach in and move your soft bits up and forward to relieve any pressure on them. This advice is meant for men and women. You want the shorts to be able to hold all your stuff in place. Now, the nature of us humans is to buy shorts that are too big because we think that that tight sausagey feel can't be right. But resist the urge to buy shorts that are too big. Shorts that are too big can leave you with folds of skin that create pressure points and possibly the pad moving around a lot as you pedal, which creates friction. Pressure points and friction are your enemies, and they must be whacked before they whack you. Capiche? The final piece of this puzzle is to use some chamois cream to help keep things friction-free. 
Here's another fun fact. Chamois cream used to be a leather treatment that got rubbed directly into your leather chamois to condition the leather and offer some lubrication. These days, you apply the cream directly to your skin in the creases where your legs connect up with your body, and also in the perennial area, or what is indelicately known as the taint. Well, that's it. In our next video, we'll go deeper into the whole chamois cream thing. What are the different types? What's in them and why? You'll definitely want to tune in for that. Thanks for watching, and don't forget to like and subscribe. And we'll see you next time on CycleCraft TV.